That's a big cow. Probably old Magic Mike milkshake. 1,800 pounds of do whatever I want, cheese and buttermilk. All right, all right, Milky. Mock headline. Cow loses steer down. Loss is utter disgrace. Gotta go, pal. The box score. I don't know a lot about sports, but I can drink a lot of beer. My motto is simple. C's get degrees. Need a long and appropriate hug? I'm your man. I think I'm smarter than you, because I probably am. Power Cowards for Box Score. Hello and welcome to the Box Score. I'm Brock in Los Angeles at the BS News Desk. There, of course, are the Danettes in Milford, Connecticut. Uh, Chris Mannix in the chair today for Dan Patrick. Uh, and Chris Mannix, a former ball boy for the Celtics. Paulie, were you glad to have a, a ball boy uh, take on Deflategate? You know, when we booked our uh, fill-in guest host last week, there, you know, we, we had a few guys who wanted, and all the guys we asked for came through, and it was great. Chris is one of them. And we had no idea that we'd have Ross Tucker, who <laughs> played for the Patriots, and Chris Mannix, who was a ball boy. And this is the only week, one of the few weeks, where the topic fits perfectly, back similar back. experience that they have. Like, as much as you want to say, well, he was a ball boy for the Celtics, that's not like the NFL. It's, a, it's quite a bit like the NFL. You just replace a few things, switch a few things, but it could have worked out better. Well, the deflated ball uh, topic is the hot story around the world of sports. McLovin, is this the uh, one of the hottest scandals to ever hit Super Bowl week? Not really when you think about all the scandals. I mean, I think there's just more media now, so it feels hotter. I don't think it's as big as Baron mm. Robbins disappearing. Oh, Ray Lewis. All the guys who got arrested. Well, Ray Lewis came after Eugene the Super Bowl. Robinson. Eugene the... Robinson jumps to mind. Remember the Barrett Robbins? Yeah. I would, I, not that I wish I had it now, but when Barrett Robbins happened, I think we were in San Diego, Fritzy. Yeah, yeah, right? I think so. San Diego Super Bowl. Yeah. And an all pro center for one of the starting crazy. teams goes missing two days before the game. I mean, think about how little this is in comparison like to that. Movie. Tom Brady didn't go missing in Mexico. Beginning of he took two, he, he maybe had a guy take two pounds out of a ball, air pounds. <laughs> so what, if, what if the story was, uh, we can't find Tom Brady last seen in Nova Scotia? You know, this yeah, guy, yeah. Barrett Robbins, would not like some work. Slappy, he was a starting all-pro center. What a, what a wild story. It was. Uh, well, uh, back to the Patriots, Bill Belichick spoke to the media today, and then you guys went around the horn with some hard-hitting questions that you would have asked the coach. Fritzy, what would you ask? Whether this was an accident or not, or something to do with the climate, why does there always seem to be issues and problems of cheating around your organization? Okay, Perloff. So did you do it, Bill? Yeah, it's not going to get a real response. Yeah, Paulie. I would say before Sunday, did you have any knowledge that your equipment staff, ball boys, or Tom Brady's liked the ball deflated so he could throw the ball better before okay. Sunday? Okay, see. What does Tom Brady smell like? Seems like a legitimate question to me, uh, and I've never been around Tom Brady before. Uh, and maybe he helped lighten the mood a little bit to get Bill to start spilling some real information. But to be honest, I've seen, I mean, we all know that Tom Brady smells awesome. I mean, like. <laughs> yeah, but what kind of awesome? Like, what brand of awesome? Is it like, does it have like a cedar or oaky smell mm, to it? I can or see is that. it a little more. Beachy. You know, beachy. A Montauk. A breezy. Casual right. Friday afternoon to Montauk. You know, I just want a, a hint of cherry in there. I, I, <laughs> these are the things that I want to leather. Hint of or like cherry. Crush, you know, that's what I would want to know. He smells uh, like herringbone. May have been an inappropriate time to ask that question, but. Fritzy, what's your guess, uh, best guess as to what Tom Brady smells like? I, uh, I like the way, the way Seton described this kind of, you know, oak, hickory kind of mm. wood, you know, sitting by the uh, campfire, maybe uh, making My some kind of s'mores kind of smell. I would guess With he, a hint of cherry. Was I would nice say maybe touch. early Tom Brady, Midwestern Tom Brady was at Michigan, probably smelled that way, like yeah. timber and logs. I would say now he smells more like the supple leather of a Lamborghini Diablo. <laughs> like the fresh, because you know, he's more of an international guy as now. As long as he doesn't smell like when, you know when you walk by, you don't even have to walk in and you're at the mall and mm. you go past like oh. Abercrombie and Fitch and oh. you're like, oh, there must be there must be one of those around here. I can't like well, get through this haze of, you, know, you guys forget. You don't smell like that. <laughs> you forget the Giselle influence. You know, Tom's been dancing in Brazil a lot. Maybe just a hint of Chipotle, mm. you know? <laughs> Not the chain, the original spice. Yes. Mm. 
Yeah, it sort of burns your nose. Uh, so it'd be more uh, chipotle. Well, while the uh, Pats were caught trying to get the upper hand, uh, turns out similar things are done in the NBA, and you guys had Al Horford from the Hawks on, and he talked about it. When we go to cold cities, um, uh, you know, they, they they won't have, like, we go to morning shoot on, like, at 10 in the morning, and it's, like, icebox in there. <laughs> they don't have, like, the heaters going or anything, and we're out there just freezing. And, uh, and I'm not going to name name cities, but, but you know who you are. Oh, I'll name it for I think I was at one of those shoot-arounds with you, Al, in Philadelphia about a week or so. <laughs> yeah, that was one of them. That was one of them. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's so something, you know, a small step. I mean, it's not nope. that big a deal. You know, honestly, I think Philadelphia is just cheap because they don't really want the opponent to be at a disadvantage of trying to lose <laughs> to get a draft pick. So I, I think that Al misread misread the signs of Philadelphia. I think they're just trying to save on their gas bill. <laughs> Probably. That's completely reasonable. Uh, Seton, have there been any attempts at sabotage in the man cave? Hmm. Oh, boy. I don't know if there have been attempts at sabotage here in the man don't cave. Don't things go uh, missing sometimes? We've certainly had, yeah, there's been some missing items. Uh, that's probably me. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the Super Bowl has certainly had some interesting mishaps. We seem to have a lot of water leaking all the time mm -hmm. because we build these like really extravagant sets and stuff like that. And for some reason, like all of a sudden, Michael Irvin sat down and boom, raining and water is dripping and you see people scrambling all over the place. That would be the closest I could think of sabotage. And also, I would say, I think someone's messing with us. Every other Super Bowl, our bathroom doesn't work on set. Mm -hmm. We've had like, well, I think maybe New York. See, now I thought that was you doing that to Fritzy. Oh, just, oh, I would not do that. I will not go that far. I thought that was like you your own personal joke exactly. where you're like, oh, oh the bathroom's no. broke again. I just want it to be uh, <laughs> close by, even if it's one of those, you know, little, you know, dirty outhouses that you don't want to go anywhere near. The problem is we have very little time between segments, especially Super Bowl week, and guests are coming in and out, and we're doing little bits and stuff. Is the scariest phrase I'm in the thinking, world? I'm concerned right now, but when we go there, that they go, yeah, you just go down, route this, to, that's where they're going to point to where the bathroom is. So the route what? Do I need my easy pass? I, oh, yeah. Like is that, you, know, oh. you know, if for no other the reason I'm going to be selfish say for me, I need to have me close access, and I don't think uh, is your, the powers that be are being sensitive. Is your least that. favorite phrase in the world low flow toilets? That is definitely up there. Because I mean, you need the but, full, you need full flow. But, but just below full that, flow. just just as, as uh, nerve wracking as making sure we get the big name guests all week right. is where the restroom is, and is it close enough to do your business and get back before the start of the next segment, yeah, which I, it almost never is. Well, you know, I remember in Miami, it was man, was oh, it Miami, Miami that yeah. you were like, oh man, the closest ones at like the W Hotel, right. like, three blocks up me? there. And you were and it's funny, I the got, fear like, have, that came two, over your face. We have like, like, we have like two, this. it's going to take me nine minutes to get there. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I didn't do what I have to do. It's good. That's a half hour project. I remember that I first three day. Minutes. I remember that first day on set and our, our, the restroom in our RV was not working. Everything else was working great. The RV was not like, well, there's a hotel right over there. And it was right over there. It literally was probably 300 yards away. But when you have a four minute break and Fritz has to go 300 yards this way and he's not a runner. But I'm, yeah, I'm and so fast. And back and then you got your session to deal with. There's no way. You know, to be fair, it's absolutely impossible. You did have the, I'm being all it's completely serious. It's, it's, not, it's, it's, not a, it's not a possible yeah. amount of time. You did have the Atlantic Ocean right there. The ocean was there. But, and then um, you know what else, too, though? To make matters even worse, at some point, like around like day one or two in Miami, we decided to just get rid of the bathroom altogether and make that the box. Yes. So then we like took the door off, now I think, no and like did that, and then we're like, ah, nah, screw it, we won't do the box while yeah. we're here, we'll do the That's a human things. resources thing, you know, we need to make a couple of calls. It's probably too late now, we've got things Can built you really? months ago, but you know, it'd be nice to have a little sense of three. Maybe the guys may need to use the bathroom between uh, five in the morning and 10 in the morning. Mountain. Can you name the layout of every Super Bowl bathroom we've had? And like when people ask for Super Bowl memories, or can you run down like, yeah, I remember in Indy, there was a porta potty, 250 <laughs> I'll tell you down the wind. I spend more time worrying about where that restroom is than any kind of prep or make sure we plug this the right. product Dallas the bathroom. Duh. Uh, oh, what if at the American Airlines arena, yeah. wasn't it? Oh. Yeah. Oh, that was like across the park. You had to like run by Dirk Nowitzki <laughs> yeah. and say, hey, but, but hey, Dirk. But even, even in New York last year, you had to go down the ramp and a few flights of steps. <laughs> and around a truck. Yeah, nowhere. It was nowhere near. And the other choice was a little dirty outhouse that had like mud all over it where you like you would be mud. sinking in the mud to get into this Have nasty you, little outhouse. As a producer, what are you doing this year to ensure yeah, that you're yeah, yeah, I dropped the ball. It's, tomorrow's already fine. I have not even addressed it. I'm hoping for all these years someone will be like, you know what, these guys need a place to uh, do their business. They have a three minute window. Sure. One of them has, you know, gastro issues, so we, we should be sensitive to that. With all the fancy bells and whistles, maybe one less cactus, one less cowboy hat, and a clean bathroom. Are you hoping set. Mike White, our boss at DirecTV, is watching right now? Because I, he's yes. got the power. This is a shout out to uh, Mr. White and the guys. Issues.
No, no, Mike White is a, but, uh, a gentleman. Yeah, I would be fine with a few less, but a little less leather on the chair that we're sitting on, mm -hmm. and put that towards a, a somewhat decent restaurant. So if within they gave you a really a uncomfortable of our... chair on to sit on for the week, but you had like a reasonable bathroom, like fifteen. I years think that away. would be a good try. As long as I have enough, give me a little snack table. I have enough room. What if you had to stand? I, you know what? If, if the other the other option is yeah, take Route Thirty Nine to the restroom, or there's, yeah, a, like there's a, a, a mobile it was a Miami station down there. Again. Yeah, that would be very uncomfortable. Do you want me to call the Cardinals and ask for a key to the stadium? But even is that close enough? It's probably a couple hundred yards. We'll get you a golf cart. A golf cart and a key to the stadium. Something needs to be worked out. All right, I'm on it. Because I, 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 I'm on it. You know, no one should have yeah. to hold it in that long. That's correct. Figure it out. We'll, we'll make sure you have a, 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 an outhouse with fresh blue water and we won't tape you in it and knock it over. Stick around. Chris Mannix starts to get a W in the man cave. See, I'm wearing the Duke basketball shirt. Yes. And he was walking by, and I think he was going towards the court. He said, Duke sucks. <laughs> he just said it to you. He said it to me. You know, my, my response <laughs> instinctively was, you suck. You just you yeah. said that to my yeah, I've written that before. I, I've said that. So he, he's done this before. So he said, come here. And he started bodying me up, uh, you know, posting me up. And he lit me up. He destroyed me. We are back here on the box score. Uh, that was Chris Mannix breaking down his epic matchup with Michael Jordan today. And spoiler alert, he had his dreams crushed. Um, see, do you think he learned anything from shooting around with Michael Jordan? Oh boy, uh, maybe to sort of uh, know your limitations. Maybe pick on someone your own size. I, I think it's all life lessons at that point. I don't. I don't think he gleaned anything basketball-wise from. Mr. Jordan. But that being said, uh, he's one of m many, many, many people who've been lit up by Michael Jordan. There's a lot better people I than him. I would love to be lit up by Michael <laughs> right. Jordan. I'm telling you, uh, <laughs> we've talked about that before. We've had a lot of cool experiences on this show. But that picture is that's awesome. Yeah. Game <laughs> over. Like if you're at a card table and you put yeah. down that hand, yeah. everyone else has to give you their Bodying money. Up Jordan. I cannot think of a better story of an experience than that. I mean, my, Dan's got pictures with Muhammad Ali. And you see that picture, it's like, all right. Yeah, I wish I wish up. for him you could see Jordan's face, but still it's obvious. Doesn't that matter, it's him. it's him. Still pretty pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah, we know. Well, if we learned anything from that story in today's show, it's that Chris Mannix can't seem to get a W on the basketball court. You ready? Yep. Let's go. <laughs> Straight up. Underneath? Oh no! Oh, you gotta hit Look that. at that rebound. Holy Switch! Cow. Switch, all right. Oh, that was the shot to hit. Wow, McLovin. Holly, come around. Oh, I lost it. Underneath. Oh, Go! Oh, 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 Go away! McLovin. Time out, time out, time out. Major foul. Oh, we're coming back. Hold up. Oh, man. We're coming back. I had like three opportunities to You all right? I'm fine. I'm totally oh, fine. Is, is that the back. hardest foul in the man cave? Sorry, I got you in the head. I got some balls in my elbow. Oh, no, no, no. You just knocked my... Uh, he had three chances. my glasses on. Playing it. Yeah, uh, we still don't have a W. It's really miraculous. You had so many I feel like you, Chris, had so I get the feeling like we're going to hopefully do this show for many more years, and there'll be many times where Chris will fill in, I hope. I don't think we're ever going to get... This is like... You know how a great franchise can't get over the hump, like the Colts can't beat the Patriots it's right like now? It's a jinx. I or the, the Pistons. The, You're the Generals. The Jordan Jordan Bulls couldn't get past the Pistons. He did your part. He, had, he just hit one of those three. I don't know, understand yeah, how he missed awful. all three. Over for three from within three feet. He gets nervous, I think. Now, here's the question that I have, though, of watching that back uh, and now realizing that the foul really wasn't all that severe. Was it severe enough to stop the game? It well, sounded pretty glasses hard. fell off. The glasses were in jeopardy. They got knocked. These are three hundred and sixty-four dollar off. Oh, three sixty-four. Yeah. And the glasses were. A, and actually, by the way, Paulie, it wasn't a light foul. I wouldn't describe it as light. He bashed your. Was there already whiplash going well, up? I, I, I never. I don't think anyone described it as a light foul. I'm just wondering if it was. I went. The game. I think, I think my glasses were on. I'd give you no, if my glasses were on, I would have gone for a layup despite the foul. But I don't think Paulie was going to let me get the shot off, which I well, I respect. I, I thought. Now I watch a video. I think McLovin was pump faking, like getting, getting, doing a couple of these, and I went up, and my elbow got was all on the ball, but my hand just raked his face. But you know what? He was getting physical with me. I was going to get physical back. I figured there's no <laughs> ref there. Uh, get the ball in because if you would have scored, you would have been. You'd... No, you had. It's sort of like you don't let you don't let the other team score the final point. You did what you had to right? do. Right. Yes. Exactly. I totally respect. If that, that game was to three or four, but this game was to one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it worked. I, nobody called anything. Well, McLovin, you still have your glasses, which is a victory, but we lost a little bit in that. Uh, stay with <laughs> yeah. us. It's no your row after this. We 
are back here on the box score. The University of Phoenix Stadium will be rocking come time for Super Bowl. But what about the Danettes' first trip to a big venue or arena? Well, we asked him about it. It's time to do what Fritzy loves the best. Let's play. No! Let's start with the front row. Uh, Polly, what was the first stadium that Seton went to go see a big event in? Sporting event. Stadium. Oh, that's a good question. What, what? Let me clarify this for you guys. It's stadium, arena, something like that. A, a big okay. venue. I want to say East Rutherford for a, for a Seton Hall game, but it could have been the, the stadium on campus. But I'm going to guess because it was closer to home. Oh, <laughs> That's right. I, I gotta stick with his name, Seton Hall University Basketball Arena, whatever it's called, to see a home Seton Hall game. Was it the uh, home arena uh, for uh, Seton Hall? I think my first sporting event was a Seton Hall basketball game at Walsh Gym, um, which now I don't even know if they really use it anymore. It might be more of like a practice thing. Hopefully it's still there. Yeah, That's Seton Hall game. Count that <laughs> Buddy, that is, I'm super proud of you, man. Well, that was it. And not only did you know it, no, like you went, well, East Rutherford, oh, but it could have been the home gym. Like, wow, that was really in-depth knowledge of uh, the Seton Hall. I know, I try not to overthink you. it. You know, I mean, the guy's middle name is Seton, for God's sake. So what am I going to say, Montclair State versus uh, Ramapo Junior College? Huh. And actually, my first, uh, my first game that I went to, I have like a really vivid memory of this of being in Walsh Gym and my dad pointing out Bill Raftery and going over and getting an autograph. That's wow. Nice. And like, hey, and like, I had no idea who he was. Like, you know, my dad was like, oh no, go go ask him, for, trust me, he'll like, go go do it. <laughs> okay, hi. Onions for the front row to the back row. Fritzy, uh, where did McLovin see his first big game? I'm gonna go based on the Philly background. I have nothing else to go by other than just, you know, since Philly comes up so And much. knowing me for all these years. And knowing you all these years. I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna say the Spectrum in Philadelphia for a Sixers game. That's a good guess. Was it the Spectrum? <laughs> First stadium I attended a sporting event at was Veterans Stadium, where I saw the Eagles play the St. Louis Cardinals led by quarterback Jim Hart. Eagles won 17-6. I'm yeah. actually impressed, buddy, that you were in the I was going to keep same. it to Philly. Better, I had Veterans yeah. Stadium as a backup, but I'm like, I just saw you going to. I've only talked to about how I grew up with season tickets to the Eagles. I don't know. At least Fritz had like but that doesn't mean that was the first Nets one. six months that ago. That would have been bad if I would have said, like, you know, we're a Timberwolves game or something in Minneapolis. But I did, I did get Good it job, to the buddy. city. I was close. I'm not going to get any, We're not going to get a half point for that. But. McLovin's first car, please. The uh, Honda Accord. Okay. <laughs> Second row. daughter's name. Quick, off top of your head. Emma. Front row back to you. Uh, Seton, what stadium did uh, Polly uh, first go to a game? Uh, man, I have to go back to one, to uh, Paul's one and only true love, uh, and that's Walter Payton. It's got to be a, a Bears game, Soldier Field, right? Well, was it Soldier Field? First stadium I attended a sporting event at was Wrigley Field, 1976. Astros versus Cubs. Jose Cruz hit a grand slam to beat the Cubs. You know, Ooh. again, Seton should be right. My dad was friends with Dick Buckus. And, right, that's uh, what I was thinking. We had an in, and we did go to a Bears game when I was maybe eight. And uh, my first game was my uncle in his convertible going down the Dan Ryan mm. Expressway all the way up to Wrigley Field. And remember, like yesterday, the purple car, the... The popcorn, everything like that, and it's as good as, I mean, the memory is just emblazoned. Yeah. Shocker, the Cubs lost. Shocker, yeah, Cubs lost uh, Avanta Hayes, who struck out with two on in the night. Sorry about that, Cubs fans. Uh, last one for the back row, McLovin. Where did Fritzy uh, see his first big sporting event? Okay, well, Fritzy grew Does up Does the in... AVN Awards count? Yeah. <laughs> is that a true sporting event? Some type of mud wrestling. Fritzy grew up in Coney Island, Brooklyn, and I feel like baseball was his hedgehog. first family's first love. So, the question is, from Brooklyn, do you go see the Yankees or you go see the Mets? Oh boy. <sighs> it's gonna be so this off the board. Even, this isn't even close. <laughs> I'm gonna say the New York Yankees mm. in the house, sort of the babe. Can yeah. we try to steal? Can we the put Yankees in a guess on behalf of the front row? Yes. I'm gonna go Nassau Coliseum. I don't know the event. <laughs> oh my God! Like well, an got... Islanders game? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Go ahead. You got anything? Uh, I was gonna say so it's got to be a Mets game. It's got to be a Mets. See what we got. Were any of these guys right? I'm gonna say my best recollection would be Madison Square Garden, a Knicks game with my brother and my dad many many years ago, seeing Bernard King and company play. 
Yeah, that's. Uh, Are you sure? And, and I'm just going what? off of memory, which in, which I'm. I'm gonna day say. Day. But I, I believe it was Madison Square Garden. Uh, I've obviously been to Shea and Yankee Stadium and all those the Nassau Coliseum. You don't recall? As well. I really don't remember Nassau what it was. I was really was little. The best. Uh, I was probably like four ever. or five years old when I was going oh. to games and circuses. So I'm not 100 percent sure what my first sporting event was because I would have been too little. The Knicks City ago. Dancers. But you I, would remember but that. But I do remember being in Madison Square Garden when I was little, and I smelled something funny that I was asking my dad about, who was a police officer at the time, and he didn't really want to. Tell me what that was, and then I found out later on that uh, it was when we were King. up in the rafters, there was some doobage going on up in the uh, Jackson, up in the seats in Madison Square Garden, and people were screaming "All World" for "World Be Free." I guess it was a Nick 76ers game, and there was definitely some uh, smell of some doobage. major drugs going on. All right, well, congratulations to the front row. Shocking, they won it. Uh, don't go away. We look at McLovin getting down and dirty in all. This is exactly what the Dan Patrick Show at the Super Bowl is all about. You have rain pouring in through the roof of our set on one Hall of Famer, while another Hall of Famer is running in with an umbrella to keep him from getting drenched. Hey, Jay, 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 you know what, Jay? You know what? <laughs> wow. Michael wow. had, like, white stuff from the roof on his lapel. And he looked down, like, brushing it off. He's like, Michael Irvin can't have white powder walking around New Orleans at the Super Bowl. People are going to talk. And that's when Michael starts laughing. He's got one of the great laughs ever. Oh, my God, I'm getting wet, man. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> uh, we're back here on the box score. That was certainly a day to remember in uh, New Orleans. Seaton, who told James Lofton to give Michael Irvin that umbrella? Man, you know, I think that uh, he just made that play on his own, although I'm sure we were all sort of like, an umbrella, an umbrella, who's got an umbrella, who's got an umbrella? That was pretty but there cool. he came, like, right, sort of out of the darkness into the light. One whole favor to another. That was there you awesome. go. It was almost like it all went in slow motion. And what was even funnier, it looked more like a parasol than a classic umbrella. And for Michael to hold it all oh so daintily <laughs> yeah. over his $2,000 suit, it was so great. Well, uh, Michael Irvin tried his best to stay dry. In sharp contrast, McLovin, almost amphibious, not afraid of the water at all, went out and was uh, catching some passes out there and getting wet and wild while he was doing it, too. And, I mean, one-handers rolling around there. I mean, did you have a change of clothes? You absolutely got soaked there. No, I absolutely did not. I was later informed that was some sort of sewage drainage area. So... You want to get some shots afterwards? <laughs> yeah, it definitely... Uh, Tennis made for a long day. <laughs> uh, yeah, but at least it was relatively warm. Unlike that, if I had done that in Dallas and that cold, I'd probably yeah, be dead. I, I would have got now. some blood work done like, within 24 <laughs> hours of that. That did not look good. Well, guys, we can't talk about New Orleans without talking about tossing some beads to some lovely ladies, and you guys did just that there, tossing it to some of the loveliest ever. Uh, I mean, uh, Fritz, I gotta ask who you gonna go with. You gonna go with oh, the blonde, This is a classic. Or the redhead? Look at that yeah. group. That was a classic moment. Wow. I'm not sure some of those aren't ladies. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, man. That was just awful. <laughs> Polly, what was the reaction in the room when that idea was put out there? <laughs> oh, man. You know what? Sometimes they catch us when we're punchy. Yeah. Towards the end of the show, sometimes our, uh, some of our producers will come up to uh, the Dan and say, we got this great idea to do, to do blank. And we're just like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Just let's get a bite real quick and we're ready to go. It's really smart because, you know, you take, we're down, we've been up all day. They're, they're tired too, but they pitch an idea and we're all punchy. We've just done a three hour show. We're not thinking clearly at just, all. You just walk over here <laughs> and, and be ready to go. And that's the best way to do it. Because if you ask, like, hey, do you guys want to do this? Then you have the option of saying no. If you say, hey, we got this bit ready, come on over here. Yeah, but Paul, I mean, it's New Orleans. A more realistic explanation is we were drunk when we said yes. I, w I wish I could say I was. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to interview you. <laughs> was that the same year? I think it was. A lot of, lot of incidents so I'm great. going to interview you. <laughs> <laughs> well, inside humor, sorry. Oh, drive through daiquiri. I just love that. All right, Fritzy, who's on tomorrow? Love it. <laughs> uh, we're going to be joined by Tom Curran of Comcast Sportsnet New England. Father of nine. Father of, has he got nine yeah, children? Nine kids. Is he really? Nope. <laughs> uh, Tom will uh, you know, react to the latest on Deflategate and, uh, and what Tom Brady sure has to talking about Tom Curran a lot. Who's the other guest? That's a very good question. Uh, the uh, I like to say, as we all know, Efforting will Tom has a bachelor's degree in a construction technology. Believe it or not, actually, helps me out with some bias. Actually, I know it's a fact. His middle name is But Tom Kern will lead us off tomorrow, and after that, it's anybody's guess who's joining us. He's the owner of four hats. All right. Thanks for watching the box score. Set your DVR or tune in weekdays at 3 p.m. Eastern, right here on Audience Channel 239, or the podcast is available 
on iTunes or at podcastone.com. I don't know a lot about sports, but I can drink a lot of beer. My motto is simple. C's get degrees. Need a long, inappropriate hug? I'm your man. I think I'm smarter than you, because I probably am. Hey! Thanks for watching the box score. Holy cow!